Hi everybody, my name is Frances Doherty. I'm a lecturer in the School of Chemistry at the University of Glasgow. Today we're going to talk to you about a numbers project across the university. So I started to look at numbers um, for use in chemistry. We looked at using it in online labs, we looked at creating practice questions for physical chemistry calculations. And I found out that one of my colleagues in earth sciences was also using it. And we're both interested in math support for our students. So we ran a workshop at our learning and teaching conference last year. And there's quite a lot of people in the university interested in general math support on some basic topics. And we decided that rather than everyone try to create their own separate resources, we would come together to create a numbers resource that could be used across the university. And the idea is it will provide basic math support and then we can individually add questions about our own subject specific um, questions to it. So we got some funding to work on this project and we decided that it would be really nice to have the students involved in creating the resources and we would like their input and what they would like and what kind of questions would be useful to them. So we have employed three students on the project this year and I'm now going to pass over to them to tell you what they've been doing. Well, hello everyone, I'm Tess and myself, Anna and Michael are the student interns working on the Numbers project. So I'll start by briefly describing the assignment and what we've been doing so far. So, uh, this is just a little quick slide of all the Numbers project team. So the aim of the project so far has to be to create a maths based question pool that can be used as a source across schools in the university. And the applications of the question pool are hoped to be quite versatile. So for example, staff can use the pool to create exams or assignments for students, while students can use it in a more independent way, maybe a more self-directed learning uh, for self-testing and practicing questions themselves. So as far as um, our, our role went, we initially familiarized ourselves with the Numbus uh, platform and even participated in a training session with the creator of the platform, Christian Lawson Perfect. And then after that, we began kind of combing through existing questions and grouping them into folders and um, kind of grouped by question type. Um, and we found that the questions seemed to vary in difficulty, but kind of capped at advanced higher level for, for what, we, what we require. So this kind of first task of seeing what was already on the platform gave us a bit of a flavor of the format and style of the questions on the platform and even allowed us to have a go at the questions ourselves. So. The next step kind of involved each of us being assigned a work package consisting of five categories are then further sub subdivided into groups uh, based on question type. From here, we're to kind of collect around five questions per topic, preferably randomized so that for one given question, you kind of have kind of an infinite number of questions for each question type if you, if you have that randomization. Um, and then we want an adequate level of advice for each question too, just so that when you answer a question, you get a good kind of level of feedback. So making sure that all of these questions had this kind of adequate level of advice in a similar format made, uh, made kind of communication between staff and students a, a key thing, and this, this needed to be quite effective. Um, yeah, and it was initial to have this kind of initial grouping of questions, just to make sure that there was a bit of overlap between our three areas of focus. So this structure has given us a good um, level of structure to progress and I'll pass on to Michael to let you know a little bit more. Uh, thanks Tess. So yeah, as Tess currently said, uh, there are three of us working on each one of these packages. Um, uh, for example, uh, package C, which I am working on and responsible for, has differentiation as a subject area. And uh, for example, I could have differentiation of sine x and cos x as a specific topic within um, that area. Um, the reason is for this is that when lecturers or tutors want to create tests or find questions for students who need to revise the differentiation, for example, they can go into the differentiation subject area and find different questions with varying levels of difficulty. Um, we are currently having meetings at the start of every package to discuss what we want to achieve in each of these different work packages and how many questions are needed for each topic area. Uh, we are currently having meetings, um, oh sorry, we are also using an Excel spreadsheet uh, to keep track of progress and testing of questions so that staff can see at a glance how we are getting on, an example of which can be seen on the slide. Um, the hope is that uh, each of these questions uh, packages will take us 10 hours in total, but that can vary depending on how many questions there already are on the Numbus platform and the difficulty of the questions. Uh, the hope in the future is we might be able to create degree specific questions for lecturers 
for example. Uh, for finance, we could have questions that deal with present or future value and problem solving uh, compound interest questions. I'll now pass you to Anna. Thanks, Michael. So as student interns, we found Numbus fairly easy to use overall, but it takes time to get to grips with creating questions and coding. It's quite straightforward to copy already existing questions to our bank and adapt them to suit our needs, but starting from scratch is more challenging, as you can see from the examples on the slides. Um, we've developed technical skills whilst interacting with the software and learning to code, and it was also valuable to collaborate with staff members and each other in a more formal working environment, which was new for us. As students, it's also great to not have to wait for a response from lecturers or tutors, but to get instant answers and advice for specific questions. This saves time for both students and lecturers and allows for flexibility. Students can reveal answers before attempting a question to read the advice and learn how to approach it. The randomization feature is particularly useful for repeated practice in areas of difficulty, as students can keep doing questions until they fully understand the topic. This is available through the try another question like this one button. One thing we all agreed upon was how we wish we had numbers when we were transitioning to university and now during our courses of second and third years. It's very useful to have quick access to a huge range of maths questions, whether as a refresher or to learn a new skill for our course. It's easy to find questions for specific topics if you find something particularly challenging by using the search tool, which allows for a personalised learning that fits your needs. So um, myself and Dr. Doherty are um, actually hoping to kind of develop numbers chemistry uh, questions. So this will kind of consist of us writing questions completely from scratch. So hopefully, hopefully kind of contributing to the platform on a whole rather than just taking questions, but actually writing our own and adding them in. Um, this is going to uh, mostly co cover first and second year physical chemistry topics that we have maybe paper copies of, but would be nice to kind of transform into a digital um, environment. So this will then allow us to share it with the Numbus community. So that's that's our next our next step. Um, so yeah, thank you for listening, and if you have time uh, to ask any questions. <laughs>